The Nomadic Travel Pack is a 22 30 liter expandable backpack, not to be confused with the Nomadic Travel Bag we reviewed previously. I'm Tom, the founder of Pack Hacker, where we love using our expertise and real world experience to provide practical resources and honest opinions guiding you towards smarter travel. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Mark and I have been testing the Nomadic Travel Pack for three weeks in Detroit, Michigan. And it's important to note that this is a new version of the Nomadic Travel Pack. This came out in August of 2019. There are a couple of minor tweaks that happen between this version and the older iteration. So let's jump in and check everything out with the Nomadic Travel Pack. Kicking it off with the main materials of this bag, we have this tarpaulin material on the outside. In our experience, this material tends to mark up a little bit more than other materials on the market, such as nylon or polyester, but that's what you're getting into with a material like this. It's a little bit more rubbery feeling than that of the old Nomadic Travel Pack, so it's a little more subdued, a little less shiny, and just has a better feel to it overall. At the time of this video, the only colorway available is black, and we are totally okay with that. Moving on to the branding perspective, we have a decently sized Nomadic logo at the bottom here, as well as some branding on these straps as well. Now, if we compare that to the older Nomadic Travel Pack, they have a bunch of these triangles going on here, and I just personally didn't like the look of it. A lot of people on the team don't. They have the triangle on the straps here, but in the newer version of the Nomadic Travel Pack, it's just a lot cleaner and more of a subdued look, which we definitely are digging. Beauty is always in the eyes of the holder though, so that's why we toss this out to our Instagram audience to see what they thought. Feel free to go follow us at, at PackHacker on Instagram if you wanna be involved in future polls. So to wrap up the rest of the materials in this bag, we have some durable Wujin hardware that's going on and some of these strap adjusters and buckles. We have weatherproof zoom zippers going on, which are decent, but are a bit hard to open, especially around the corners since they are the weatherproof version. And on the new version of the travel pack, we have YKK zippers on some areas of the pack as well. More details on that later. Kicking it off with the external components, let's start with the harness system on the back here. Starting with these straps on the back here, these are mediocre. Now, there's not a ton of padding going on here, and the padding isn't dense at all. So it's not necessarily the thickness of the straps that makes a bag comfortable, it's more about the foam density. These are decently thick straps, but there's not a lot of dense padding going on overall, which means that it is uncomfortable under a very heavy load. It's not the biggest deal when you have this in 20 liter mode and you're kind of just like carrying things back and forth for EDC, but if you're using this as a full blown one bag travel backpack in 30 liter capacity mode, fully stuffed to the brim with heavy gear, maybe even some camera gear, you are definitely gonna feel that on the shoulders. Moving down the straps, of course, we have that logo there that we mentioned earlier, and then we have a pretty much permanently attached sternum strap. We like that this is attached securely, so you are less likely to lose it. But at the same time, it is still detachable. Basically, just put it to the top of this rail, and you can pull that sternum strap right off. Moving down to the bottom, we have some pretty standard strap adjusters. These are definitely pretty durable. You can kind of tighten and loosen those as you need. The only thing we wish that it had were some elastic keepers here to manage the excess strap going on at the bottom of the bag. And at the bottom here, there are two rubbery-like Hypalon attachment points for a hip belt. And we like that those can kind of be hidden beneath this foam padding in the back when they're not in use. When you do want to use them, just pull them out, you attach the hip belt directly to it. The hip belt itself is a tad on the bulky side, but we like the functionality and we like that it makes this bag more comfortable to carry. We also dig the way that it attaches with these sturdy metal buckles. So definitely has that as a big pro to it, and it does help this bag carry more comfortably. Not to mention some handy pockets on the hip belt as well. Back at the top, we have a nicely padded grab handle here way more padded than the regular shoulder straps here. I kind of wish they would have shaved some of this padding off and maybe added it to these shoulder straps. This strap is anchored between the two shoulder straps here, so that can be a little bit unwieldy to carry and pick up compared to if it was mounted on the bag itself. Now, we totally understand why it's not mounted on the bag itself, because there's just not a lot of room with all these zippers going on up here. So yeah, we have to do with it being anchored to the shoulder straps. Moving on to the back padding behind the sternum strap, there is some decent padding going on, 
which we dig. There is this kind of semi-rigid frame sheet that will help keep some structure to the bag. Yeah, another thing with this bag is just the structure, all the foam padding in the sides. It can stand up on its own, which we definitely dig. Now this back panel here, again, nicely padded. You got a little channel here for airflow and you can hide these straps behind these buttons as well. It does take a little bit long to kind of get these unbuttoned, get them situated and then button this back up. But there you go, it is hidden. If you do want an example of a bag that does this really well, check out the Peak Design Travel Backpack. There's a series of magnets and hinges and things and they, the strap itself just really slides really nicely into place. Now, this definitely does the job on the Nomadic Travel Pack, but it could be a little bit more smooth. Then we have a luggage pass-through at the back of this bag as well. So you can put your roller luggage handle through it, wheel this around the airport. Due to the more boxy structure of this bag and the pretty dense kind of foam padding and structure going on, this bag does do a great job at standing up on its own. And we like to mention that because a lot of people have specifically asked us to find bags with this feature. So to those people, here you go. The Nomadic Travel Pack does a great job at standing up on its own. To wrap up the external components on this bag, we have a water bottle pocket as well as a handle combo on both sides. So you can kind of grab the handles here if you want to carry the bag from any side. We definitely dig that they've included that. They also have some stays in here which allow the bag to keep its structure even as you are holding it by that handle. Next up, the water bottle pocket which has this magnetic kind of design going on here with this mesh. So that opens way up when you wanna use it, and when you don't, it maintains a low profile. Now, one thing to note here is that when you have these side water bottle pockets with water bottles in them, it can make it a little bit harder to utilize these side handles because they do kind of go inside of that water bottle pocket. So just note that. Moving on to the interior of the bag, starting with this hidden pocket on the back side. This little zippered pocket is hidden behind the frame sheet here. It's a little bit hard to access, which is a good thing. That means it's more secure. Perfect pocket to stash your passport or other valuable items like extra cash or cards. Next up, the quick grab pocket at the top of the bag which is pretty easy to access and is a great size for a quick grab pocket. This structured pocket features a soft liner material that's gonna be good for protecting your cell phone or being gentle on your sunglasses. Plus there's a cord pass through here that can be used to charge your phone if you wanna have a battery bank in another area inside of the bag. Below that quick grab pocket, there is a large U-shaped pocket that opens way up and gives you a ton of organization options on the inside. One note on the old version of this, we noticed that the liner on the side here seemed to get stuck a little bit while we were zipping and unzipping. We're not sure why that is, but with the newer version, we have not run into that issue quite yet. One other thing on the new version is that the liner is new here. So we have this kind of heathered gray material. We think it's an improvement on the old one as it looks a little bit more polished and feels a little bit better in the hand as well. Moving on to the front flap of the pocket, starting on the top, we have this zippered RFID pocket going on at the top here. Below that, a zip pocket that goes across about three quarters of the bag, and from there, pretty much goes to the bottom of the bag when it's unzipped. Directly below that, two mesh divider pockets, and then two pen, pencil, or stylus pockets on the side on the other quarter of the bag. On the bag side of the flap, we have two rows of mesh divider pockets going on here, going at half the width each, and then we have this small liner pocket at the bottom as well for additional compartmentalization and separation of gear. The engineering here does seem a little bit overkill, but if you wanna pick and choose the pockets you use, that's probably gonna be better than if you're expecting to fully pack this thing out and have it all work perfectly with any type of gear. The good news is everything lays flat if you're not using it, so it's still nice to have all these options should you choose to use them. Moving on to the back of the bag, we have this laptop compartment that fully unzips and opens up. Now this is an area where I'm a little bit surprised to see them using Zoom zippers here. When they said they updated the bag with YKK zippers, I thought that would be throughout the entirety of the bag but we have zoom zippers here on arguably one of the most important parts of the bag, the part that holds the harness system to the rest of the bag. If this zipper broke, you would be pretty much left with a back panel here and some straps, and then this small bag here that you can hold by hand. All zipper brands can break, but generally we have had better luck with YKK than we have had with Zoom. Okay, enough zipper talk, now let's get back to the laptop compartment. So this opens up all the way, 
Theoretically, you could keep your laptop in here when you go through security. That's gonna be up to the TSA agent whether they want to allow that or not. There's a nice Velcroed laptop compartment here with a false bottom going on, which means your laptop won't go all the way to the bottom of the bag, protect it from unexpected drops. And then we have a tablet pocket at the front here. Kind of some nice soft material going on in the inside here. Definitely dig that that's going on. This Velcro will help keep everything secure. And then on the back side, there is a liner divider pocket going on here. Definitely just fit in some flatter items or documents in there. To put this bag into expandable mode, you unzip this zipper that's right in the middle of the bag. Once you unzip this, the bag is now 30 liters and it is openable by clamshell that was below that zipper as well. So this part of the bag is not really accessible when the bag is fully compressed. As a quick pro tip, this is a perfect place to store the hip belt when you're not using it. So if you're using it as EDC, you keep this part fully compartmentalized and closed and just grab this out when you expand the bag and use it for travel. This compartment has one large mesh divider pocket going on here and a semi elastic -y liner pocket towards the bottom to note. Other than that, it is pretty much a giant bucket going on here in this clamshell. If you'd like, you can keep this mesh part completely unzipped to have access to both sides of the bag at all times. Maybe if you have some really fat packing keys and you don't want that dividing or that compartmentalization. Um, but just note that if you do wanna keep it open, there's really no easy way to hide that mesh. Again, if you want another example of a bag that does this really well, check out the Peak Design Travel Backpack where you can just roll that divider pocket down and hide the excess fabric away. Now, if we open up the main compartment of this bag here, that'll open right up. You can see this mesh divider thing we were talking about earlier is towards the back of the main compartment. Now, starting with the flap on the top, there is that nice cord pass through here that is accessible from that quick access pocket towards the top of the bag that we talked about earlier. Going down the front flap, there are two zippered mesh compartmentalization pockets on the front flap of the bag for additional organization. Inside of this main compartment, there are four mesh pockets on the sides, two on the right, two on the left. The mesh pockets on the left are a little bit larger. So here we're able to hold the included sunglasses case inside um, and they don't have any slants. The mesh pockets on the right have these slants and they're a little bit smaller and tighter for smaller items. The sunglasses case overall feels pretty cheap, although it does do a decent job at keeping your sunglasses inside of a structured compartment. Um, another negative of having this right here is that it kind of obstructs you being able to use the full width of the bag. So if you have this fully zipped up, you just kind of put it down and you wanna get some longer packing cubes in there. Uh, this thing is gonna kind of get in the way and block it. So just note that if you do plan on using the included sunglasses case. On the right hand side with these slanted pockets, they're a little bit smaller. If you go to the bottom, there is also a little bit of a nylon loop where you could like hold in pens or anything with a clip on the inside of it to keep everything a little bit more structured and secure inside of these smaller pockets. At the time of this review, Mark, our video editor, and I have been testing the Nomadic Travel Pack here in Detroit, Michigan for the last three weeks. From a usage perspective, it's been going pretty well overall. We dig some of the side pockets and organization going on, but overall feel that the design and the functionality is a bit overkill in some areas. There are some marks and scratches on the tarpaulin after about three weeks of use. Again, this isn't necessarily the Nomadic Travel Pack exclusively, it's a lot of bags that opt for this material on the exterior. We really like the idea of expandability, but when we go from 20 liters to 30 liter mode, it does get pretty fat. So while we're using this thing for EDC, carrying around all of our gear for daily needs in the compressed 20 liter mode, everything feels pretty slick overall, but when expanded to 30, fully loaded out with heavy gear, the harness system gets more uncomfortable and the bag gets fatter and harder to manage. So to wrap this thing up with some pros and cons, starting with the pros. Overall, there is a streamlined and low profile look that's going on. That's also nice for travel, especially in the 20 liter mode. The magnetic water bottle pocket design on the sides are clever and a nice addition. And the compressibility adds quite a bit of versatility. Moving on to some of the cons, overall it is an uncomfortable harness system, especially if the bag is fully loaded. It's hard to utilize all the pockets on the interior of the bag, especially if it's fully loaded. There's a lot going on with the bag and holistically it doesn't all feel super cohesive. The Nomadic Travel Pack is a great improvement on the travel bag which we've reviewed in the past, but there's still a lot to be desired. Although there are some interesting, unique features going on individually, some don't come together very well in a holistic sense. 
If you want a full featured structured bag with expandability, this bag could be for you, but if you plan on hauling this around with a bunch of heavy gear in 30 liter mode, you may want to look elsewhere. So there you have it, our review of the Nomadic Travel Pack. We would love to hear what you think of this bag in the comments below. Thanks for keeping it here at Pack Hacker, your guide to smarter travel. We'll see you in the next video.